this session is going to be, I'm going to be talking about uh, GeoShred 5. And we have the amazing wizard himself, Jordan Rudis, join us. And along with the entire team of GeoShred. Hey, Jordan, how are you? Hi, Mahesh. So, um, so let's, let's begin. Would you like to talk about the latest version so that? Yes, absolutely. So we're very, very excited because uh, my team has been working very hard on this new version. It's the biggest release that we've had uh, since really the initial release of this instrument. And um, so we're getting so close to hitting the button to uh, actually make it completely available. Uh, there are going to be six new instruments and all of us uh, in the company and those of us who've been very, very involved, uh, like Mahesh, who's been one of our biggest supporters and one of the greatest uh, GeoShred players on the planet, uh, we've been really enjoying this whole process and making sure that everything will be perfect when we release it to the public. Uh, and it, I have to say that it's been an amazing uh, experience for me, having started this whole vision of this app a long time ago, and then to join forces with the guys at Malforte to create GeoShred and to see what's happened with it. Uh, you know, around the world, it's not only being accepted, but people are using GeoShred as their main instrument. They're actually GeoShred players, which is incredible because, you know, you put these things out in the world and you never know what's really going to happen. Uh, so to get all this amazing feedback and to see the beautiful music that people are making. And I have to say, honestly, especially uh, the people who are playing Carnatic music and using all the very advanced pitch sliding has been extremely rewarding. So it's really been a great journey. Um, I also want to say that, you know, the, the new um, release features these amazing instruments, SWAM instruments, and it comes from a partnership with my dear friends from Audio Modeling in Italy. They make some of the greatest physical models in the world, and uh, I'm just so pleased that we could uh, establish this partnership and work with these great people who make such wonderful physical models that have also honestly been a pleasure to work with. So the whole thing is very uh, synchronous, very timely, and I think they're some of the most beautiful sounding instruments that are available uh, in the world right now in the, in the electronic space. So um, yeah, so let's get the party started. Cool, maybe, maybe I'll play something for a bit just so that people get an idea of what the sounds are. So the app nice. looks pretty much the same. Nothing has really changed. It's just the sounds on the app that have changed a bit. That's the new clarinet uh, sound. And I'm going to play, a I'm going to do a short performance which features the clarinet and the flute, uh, just so that you get an idea of uh, what these sounds are like to play.
So, so as you can see, that uh, thank you, thank you, thank beautiful. You. Thank you so much. So, as you can see, that is a combination of the clarinet and uh, the flute. And uh, as you can tell, now it's a lot more expressive to play the app. And uh, I'm able to actually go loud and soft by just pressing, uh, by just changing the position of my fingers on the app. Uh, for example, uh, if I were to play a note, if I play it on the lower side and on the higher side, I, there's a change in dynamics. And also there are extra effects like the flutter. And there's also an overblow on the flute, which I can enable and the vibrato, there's, there's so much happening on the app and it gives you such a fine level of control. And that's what I find really exciting. Yeah. You know, what's amazing to me, and I think it's probably surprising to all of us, is that the experience of playing on the glass is yes. probably, in my humble opinion, the best playing experience for any of the kind of sliding especially that you like to do in the kind of Carnatic style. I mean, I've tried all the other instruments that you can do sliding, some of the hardware solutions or instruments. And yeah. of course, there's some really wonderful, great things about all of them. But as far as just having control of the pitch like that, yeah. the glass for me has turned into this really a beautiful experience. Right? I, I totally agree. And what I really like in the newer versions of GeoShot is the ability to control dynamics. Mm -hmm. which, uh, because now we have the key Y velocity, which changes a lot of things for me and the expression pad. So that's something that I um, incorporate a lot in my playing, even when I use the presets of the earlier versions. Right. And, you know, GeoShred is available to play on an iPhone or an iPad. And of course, all of them are different sizes. And I think what happens with people is they kind of get used to their particular size instrument. And then you just like any instrument, you get accustomed to a certain kind of fretboard or a certain kind yes. of keys or a certain kind of action. Like for me, my main instrument now is the iPad Pro and all the spacing of the notes. That's yes. like how I like to play. So when I play on like a smaller iPad or even an iPhone, I'm like, oh, this isn't my instrument. Although it's Very all true. possible, right? Yeah, and, and for me, it's the iPad Pro. Uh, right now, I play it on a third generation, but my favorite one is the first gen iPad Pro, which is uh, because it's just the weight that actually, it doesn't really affect the sound, but it's just something that I like. <laughs> exactly, totally. And there's one, uh, oh, well, there's certain iPhones that also enable the 3D touch. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. So uh, if you have one of those or you can find one of those, it's a great way to get into the world of not only having X and Y positioning, but you can also press in and have what they call the Z position. Yes. That's which really is cool. yet another level of sensitivity. So you have the beauty of sliding on the glass, but you also have the uh, ability to, to press into it to create things. And the other thing that's important to realize is that GeoShred is a very flexible um, playing surface in terms of uh, the size of the notes. You don't mm -hmm. have to have the notes be a, a small size. You can make them very large. So um, let me just call up. I can show you something quickly on GeoShred. So like for certain sounds, like when I play with Dream Theater, I like to um, have the notes be very large. This is one sound that I use a lot. Uh, it's called fripper finger swell. If I turn my uh, camera down here, this one. So I have the notes very large because um, I want to have a lot of room to express, right? Like yes. This. Wonderful. 
So in a case like that, they're really large because I'm almost picturing each note as its own kind of almost like volume pedal. So to have that space yeah. is really, really a nice thing to get that. And that's one of the things I love about software also, and especially with GeoShred, any patch you create, you really could customize the playing surface to be as much room as you feel that you need exactly. to express the instrument. So you might decide when you get GeoShred, oh, I like the way that the cello sound is programmed, but I want to have the notes to be larger. And that's totally something that you can do as a, as a user to make your own program and make it work for you. True, As, and on my iPhone, I, I usually set it to, you can change the number of strings and I have less strings on the iPhone, so I get that uh, flexibility. So you can, I, it's, it's, still, it's so great that that fa facility is available <clears throat> because I can't imagine playing six strings on an iPhone. I have to probably two or three, right? Right, totally, totally. And the other yeah. thing that uh, if people don't know is that they can set the scale for whatever you want it to be. So you can have all the chromatic notes in the scale on any scale highlighted, but you can also limit yourself to only having the notes in the particular scale, which can be really, really fun. Um, you know, yeah. uh, one, of the, one of the principles, one of the ideas behind creating GeoShred is I wanted to create an instrument that would give the professional something new, something really cutting edge and stimulating. But I also wanted to create an instrument <clears throat> excuse me, that would enable people who are novices, people who don't, are, are not usually music makers, to be able to play music. And yes. so that was the thinking behind it. And I think that we um, reached our, our goal. I know that a lot of young people, kids, can just pick up GeoShred, and in seconds they can be, you know, shredding the blues. Like, if you just want to, you know, play a blues scale on this particular patch, you could go... You know... So you can kind of play the blues with one finger and in probably 30 seconds, I could teach you how to play the blues. Amazing. And one of the fun things about GeoShred is also that you can have backing tracks like this one that puts you uh, in the blues mode quickly and on the playing surface is the right scale. <laughs> So if you've always wanted Brilliant. to play outrageous blues, now's your chance. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Cool, but we're here today also to focus on these amazing physical models, uh, which is the new, the new element of GeoShred and our partnership with audio modeling. And I know we're joined today by um, my partners. I know Pat is out there, uh, who's kind of the project leader of GeoShred. Um, and has been working tires, tirelessly to make this happen, uh, as well as Lele and Simone from Audio Modeling. So at some point, we're going to open this to questions. But maybe I'll switch uh, and actually play a little bit with one yes. of the new models.
I can. Hi. That was brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, can you tell me, uh, so what sounds were you using there? Was it the cello? <clears throat> so I used the cello and uh, I put it in finger expression mode. What's really cool is that the same patch you can either have so you can control all the expression and bow pressure with the expression pad, or you can just hit the little switch and then you have all the expression on your finger. So depending on where you play on the particular note, it's going to really be very beautiful. It's actually, you know, all the instruments are so beautiful, but I have to say that I'm really drawn. I think I should have been a cellist because I'm very drawn to the cello. I think everybody's going to develop a personal connection with a particular sound. I'm not yes. sure how you feel, Mahesh. You probably feel similar, like there's a certain... You know, certain geo shred, so, geo shred sounds which you can express and they really exactly. are part so of you. I have, I have a preset that I use for literally everything, which is mm -hmm. the sitar 1.5. Mm. And uh, now I, I, I'm definitely going to be working on the flute and the clarinet. And, uh, the, and the, the, the awesome part is the techniques for each of these are totally different. So the way I play each preset will be a little different from each sound. Do you notice that as well? Yes, exactly. And like any instrument, depending on the sound, you have to change the way that you're playing it. Like I know that, you know, you're playing, I think I was hearing you say something like you play a flute in a Carnatic kind of style, it's going to be different than the way that you play with the violin because the flute inflects things very differently. There's not as much pitch sliding and maybe it's more about amplitude kind of vibrato. Right. So it's much like playing a like a keyboard synthesizer. If you want to make it sound like the instrument that you're trying to emulate, you have to know something about it. So which is an interesting concept, because one of the things behind GeoShred is we want to we want to make it so you can play any way that you like. But these models are so realistic that if you do study a little bit about the real instrument, you can pretty much emulate it to a T. Um, so all the possibilities are really open. So uh, I think we can get Pat on board a little more at this point. Hello, everyone. And I guess while we're waiting for him, if some of you don't know, so GeoShred uh, has actually made appearances uh, in different ways during my dream theater shows. And one of the fun ways that it's made an appearance is as um, part of my uh, kitar, if you will, my tech, ripped out the keyboard from my kitar and put in an iPad. So I'm able to walk to the front of the stage and play this crazy looking thing, but it's all based around GeoShred. Awesome. So uh, very fun, lots of ways to do it. And there we have Pat. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. How's it going? So, Mahesh, I wonder if you could just bring up the the slides that I gave you. There have been a lot of questions in the chat, and I, I sure. think that these slides will um, help answer those questions. Okay. Okay. So, why don't we go to the, the second slide? Um, so, um, this is a, a major update for GeoShred. Uh, the team uh, in Italy, the team in California, the team in New York, um, have been working on it for almost a year now, and uh, it's a you know a um, a whole new level of release uh, and includes all of the um, the various different uh, geo swam instruments that are shown there. The uh, people have asked what instruments are there. There's the violin, um, there's the flute, there's the cello, there's a tenor sax, which I find very expressive. There's a clarinet and there's an oboe. There we go. We go to the next slide. So how will you get the update and how will you get um, these new instruments? So the update should be in the iTunes app store sometime next week sometime. And for users who already own GeoShred, uh, either GeoShred, any of the GeoShreds, GeoShred Pro, GeoShred Play, or GeoShred Control, you'll get um, the update. And in the update, um, there's a store that will allow you to uh, purchase the, um, the new Geo Swam instruments. And the instruments are $14.99 US dollars translated into the currency of various countries. And there's also a bundle 
which is um, all six instruments for the price of five, which is a, a pretty good deal. So if we could scroll, scroll forward to the next one. There we go. So here are the details. Um, the GeoSwam instruments are going to be $14.99. Uh, there is a bundle. Um, they can be played from either the GeoShred keyboard or from MPE controllers. So we support things like the Linstrument, the Seaboard, uh, a number of other MPE controllers. And a number of people have asked, um, can you record with this? Yes, the, the plug-in version of GeoShred can be used to record the GeoSwam instruments to DAWs like GarageBand uh, or Cubasis. Maybe we could go to the last slide. Okay, and these are the folks who did it. Audio modeling with their tremendous technology. Uh, Wisdom, who uh, we've been working with, it's Jordan's company for the past five years. And then Moforte, which is um, sort of a spin out from Stanford's uh, Karma Computer Music Lab, which is where some of the basic research on physical modeling happened. So at this point, um, I think we should turn it over to questions and uh, the any questions in the chat group, either myself or Lele can come in to uh, answer the questions. I will answer one right now. I see that there's a, what is the pricing in uh, Indian rupees? Um, we don't know exactly what that will be because Apple does the, um, the currency conversion. I do think that in some countries, it's not a straight conversion from dollars to the local currency. I think there's sometimes are surcharges. So, uh, but the price in the iTunes app store will appear in the local currency. Somebody asked MPE support, will it play in the Rolly Seaboard? Yes. Uh, in fact, um, if you look at our launch video that will come with the release, uh, there's a bit of Jordan playing a violin on the Seaboard. There is a question, which version of iOS, the minimum iOS version uh, is required? Okay, that's a really good question. So um, it really works. If you want to use the plugin to be able to record to DAWs, you have to have a minimum of iOS 11.4. However, GeoShred itself goes all the way back to iOS 9.3, but for the SWAM models, you need to uh, have iOS uh, 10.0. Okay. So iOS 10 was four years ago? Yeah. And, and yes. Will there be presets per instrument is, is a question. Yes. So... For each of the GeoSwam instruments, there are eight different presets, uh, different ways to use the, use the instrument. Somebody asked earlier about uh, will there be um, the sympathetic resonator. There is a version of each of the instruments with a sympathetic resonator. Um, these are suggestion presets. If you have um, your own ideas for what you want to do with presets, you're certainly able to get in there and use the full power of GeoShred to program up and create your own presets. Uh, I do want to answer a question that was asked briefly about GeoShred Play. If you own GeoShred Play, you will be able to get the, um, the GeoSwam instruments as well. Uh, and if you want to edit them, you can do the upgrade to GeoShred Pro. You can upgrade GeoShred Play to the functionality of Pro. Great. <clears throat> so um, I have a question here saying, are all filters available for all instruments? I think by filters, he means pedals. I think... Uh, if you're talking about pedals on the pedal board in the model and effects panel, I think we can use the reverbs and delays on. Yeah, and there's filter you can uh, use. effects as well, like a mode yeah. filter that you can use on any of the sounds. So there's 22 different effects, all which can be used to process the uh, GeoSwam models. Right, and it's really fun to get in there. We haven't, uh, in, we're not initially releasing that many like wild sounds uh, with the models, but it's all possible. And in the future, we will definitely um, you know, put things out like that. And I'm sure our users will begin experimenting too when they go beyond just like the acoustic sound and they start doing some uh, you know, other experimental mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. Awesome. So there's a question about the uh, difference between GeoShred Pro and GeoShred Play. So there's actually three GeoShreds. There's GeoShred Pro, which has everything in it. There's GeoShred Play, which is just a preset player. So you can play presets, you can receive presets, um, but it does not have MIDI. It does not have uh, the plugins so that you can use DAWs, and it doesn't have access to um, iCloud for storage. And then there's another version called GeoShred Control, which is just an MPE controller. Awesome. Um, will the new GeoShred work on older iPads? 
It yeah, yes, it does all the way down to iOS. Um, well, if you're not using the, the SWAM instruments, you can go all the way down to an iPad 2. But in order to use the GeoSwam instruments, you need to at least have iOS 10. Okay. So iOS, okay, cool. So um, <clears throat> someone says, um, will, will it work on old iPad minis? I think it depends on the OS or the <clears throat> hardware. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on the OS, actually. It, okay. it, uh, if you can run, uh, I think somewhere around the third generation mini, uh, you can run pretty well with that. I'd, I'd like to answer this question about Android. Um, so this is, this is the most commonly asked question that we have. Does GeoShred run on Android? It currently does not run on Android. And, uh, the reason for that is, um, well, I do want to say we've, we've been working very closely with Google on this. We've had many meetings with them, uh, over the last couple of years and, um, at some point, it will run on Android, but at the present time, uh, if you touch the screen, there's a lot of latency. So it may be you touch the screen, dip, beep, the sound comes out a second later. So it's currently not possible to run it on Android devices. However, Google has a technology to make this work well, and we're hoping in the, the and we're we have early access to that technology, and uh, we're hoping in the next year or so to have an Android version of GeoShred. Okay, uh, so that's a very interesting question that says instrument specific effects like the vibrato uh, is different between the flute and the violin. Are specific vibratos for each instrument supported? Maybe I'll take a stab at this and pass it on to Jordan too. So there are two types of vibrato. Um, in GeoShred, there is the classic, you just push a slider up and you get vibrato and it has a depth. And that is clearly going to be the same for um, all of the instruments. However, the main power, the main amazing thing about GeoShred is the keyboard and that you can slide fluidly on the glass. Jordan mentioned this earlier. And so you can form any kind of vibrato that you wish. For instance, Mahesh typically uses gamakas. And Jordan is doing these beautiful, um, you know, modulated vibratos. And so maybe both of you guys could comment about how you use finger vibrato within GeoShred. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, Pat, uh, maybe correct me if I'm wrong or Lelo, it's out there, but I think what happens with the physical models that if you use the vibrato slider, not your finger on the actual note, that that vibrato slider can be set for a very particular speed per physical model. So remember we were discussing that. So you can probably go in there yeah. and change it, but I think that it's the vibrato according to the physical model can be can be different. And probably the most realistic vibrato will be if you use the vibrato like slider. Although you can get some beautiful musical and custom results from using your finger on the playing surface. And honestly, on GeoShred, that's my favorite way to do it. I mean, if I was playing from a keyboard, I would use the mod wheel or something like that. But on GeoShred, the beauty of the experience is that your finger is in control of the note and everything that happens at every moment. So um, I'm remembering right now my, my uh, lesson with Mahesh when I was in Dubai and, and we were talking about vibrato because I learned something really interesting, which was that I guess a more kind of Western way of thinking of vibrato is you go to a note and you kind of like, you know, give it some love or whatever and you shake it. But Mahesh was saying to me, well, everything is very, very intentional kind of, you know, when you're playing like Carnatic music and that kind of stuck in my brain. Like if you're going to shake the note a little bit, everything about it is going to be very um, like planned. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, I, I think that's really, really cool. And I need to come for another lesson, but um, I look forward to that. So with this is, you know, one of the really amazing things about the idea of vibrato is vibrato is what gives identity to the style, but also the performer. Um, like if we think about different guitar players that we love, if you think about like Steve Vai or Jeff Beck or John Petrucci or any of these guys, like how deep is their vibrato and how fast is it and how do they control it? You know, you got a guy like Steve Morse, who's one of the greatest guitar players in the world and his vibrato is wide, but it's very, very fast. And you have like a yes. Petrucci vibrato, which is a also a very wide vibrato, but it's a little bit slower, especially when he's just articulating a real melody. So you can almost tell the player by the nature of their vibrato. 
So, and, and that's the beauty of GeoShred is with your finger on the glass like that, you can make it however you want. You can make it deep, you can make it fast, you can do different things. And I think that's the beauty of it when you're playing like the Carnatic styles is that you can really do what you need need to do and what you want to do to be true to the style and also to have your own self-expression. Exactly. So, uh, so I don't, I don't quite much use the Western vibrato where you just slide it like that oscillation because the Carnatic Gamakas are oscillations between two different notes and a combination of, uh, uh, like very quick slides and very slow slides. So, uh, and it, and everything is very phrase based because it depends on the raga that you're currently playing in. So if you, if you have this idea in your head, because of the touch screen, it's so easy to actually implement it. If you know the, uh, melodic pattern of notes. So that's what I really enjoy with the app. So we have a question here, like the flute has the tutu karam, are they support? Uh, I think he, you're talking about overblow where you have the quick blowing of the flute, is that supported? We have the flutter and uh, we also have the overblow. You can actually do it. Uh, right. So yeah, it is possible. And we also have a question. Um, is it possible to do, do quick bowing on the violin with GeoShred? You know, I think we should pull Lele in uh, at this point. Oh, Swap definitely. Him from yeah, yeah exactly. so he can talk about some of the features of the model. Exactly, okay, great. So I'll, I'll just have, uh, Lele in at this point. So um, Lele is um, from Audio Modeling and uh, they are the inventors of the Swarm physical modeling technology. So I'm just going to have him on board and he can answer a few technical questions on what is possible with these instruments. But uh, as as you, uh, you all may have heard, they sound extremely realistic and extremely rich and uh, they're just beautiful sounds and I'm, I'm glad I don't have to connect to a computer to be able to play those sounds on GeoShare anymore. It's just... Uh -huh. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's so great. It's great. Hi everybody, it's uh, Lele. It's my nickname, but my full name is Emanuele. I'm co-founder at Audio Modeling and also CTO. So let me make a, a short premise is that um, um, we are working on physical models, me and Stefano Lucato, that is uh, the algorithms that we implement in our instruments uh, since 2009. And we released the first physical model instrument in 2011 and um, uh, for a desktop uh, uh, computer and now we are we are really um, happy to release these instruments also in, in this amazing platform that is GeoShred on, on uh, an iPad or or even uh, on uh, iPhone so uh, what we do uh, because I see I see a question asking uh, what's what's uh, behind the scene on creating such instruments uh, is that uh, we study a lot uh, the physics of the instrument, uh, the real instruments. Uh, we we try to to model the not only um, the mechanics of the instruments, but also the the behavior and. Uh, um, we try to guide the, the virtual musician, let's say the MIDI musician, uh, to play the instrument correctly. So for example, if you play uh, a, a flute, uh, you cannot bend the flute for, let's say, two octaves, because it's impossible on a real flute. Uh, the bending on a real flute is uh, made by tilting the, the I, I speaking of the uh, Western flute uh, sure. uh, is made by tilting the flute a bit, but the maximum range of tilting is just maybe one or two semitones maximum. Uh, we allow for some room. For example, we on our instrument we can you can bend up to 
um, uh, five semitones, if I'm not wrong, uh, but it's impossible to make a, a wider range of, of uh, pitch bending. So we try to guide the, the, the player to use the, the real instruments correctly as, as they will play in, in the real world. Okay, um, so we, we have uh, some times where we, we really study the, the, the physics of the instrument, then we try to, to implement uh, the mechanical reactions of, an, of um, a real instrument on, with using math, basically, the physical equation and so on. And finally, we fine-tune the instrument uh, with some, let's say, secrets <laughs> to uh, not allowing the, the CPU of, of the iPad in this case or, or the computer to, to be too much high. Otherwise, it, it takes too much CPU and it is not playable in real time. And we want these instruments are playable in real time and are not just uh, for studio production, let's say of, offline, but also uh, to be played live. It, it's uh, more funny to, to play those instruments live because they give you satisfaction, <laughs> I think. Um, so um, I see another question that says, uh, and ask uh, if uh, I are already have the swap instruments for seaboard. I don't know if they, if you are saying about uh, the desktop version or the noise uh, version. Do I have to buy again? And the, the answer is yes, because we cannot do any cross discount uh, on uh, on the app store. So maybe Pat can can reply better to this question. Uh, yeah. Some, someone's asking at some point, would it be possible to buy even more Swarm instruments beyond the six offered on GeoShed 5? I think we are, uh, the collaboration with uh, Mofort and, and Wisdom Music and, and Jordan is uh, just at the beginning. So I'm sure we will add more and more instruments to GeoShed. Uh, so yes. The, the, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of applause out there. I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> How about percussion, Jordan? Are you working on percussion for Geoshred? Per percussion. Oh, that's a, that's maybe a question for Loe. Are we, we going to get percussion? I think that I think that in our physical modeling world, there is work on that uh, on percussion. I know that. Uh, Pat and the Stanford guys have been doing stuff like that for a while. I don't, I can't answer for Lele, but I think down the road, we will definitely see that where it's going to come from and when, I don't know. Okay. But uh, I think that that's all open to and very possible. Okay. Yeah. So there is a question asking uh, about Spicato and Pizzicato, but uh, maybe uh, Lele, can you explain a bit about the kinds of expression and the kinds of things you can do with each instrument so that uh, because I see a lot of those questions over here. Yeah, let, let me say that the models uh, uh, that we, ent we integrated in GeoShred, are this, the, the core engine is the same of the models that we have in the desktop version, the full desktop, desktop version of Swami Instruments. But of course, we have tailored the, them to the GeoShred uh, surface and the and and uh, let's say we have simplified a bit the number of parameters that can be uh, tweaked on that platform. So um, on strings, so uh, cello and violin, uh, we can have a, a vibrato, we can have a, a, the control the, of the harmonics, uh, we have, uh, let, let me check because I don't remember everything, but uh, if I go here to the cell, we can have, uh, of course, the expression, bow position, bow pressure, and, and tremolo. So these are the main parameters that can be controlled in real time. Uh, uh, the cool things about uh, the GeoShred um, ecosystem is that uh, you can uh, create your own uh, 
control surface uh, and um, performance uh, on top of, of the keyboard. So you can add uh, sliders uh, or knobs to control the parameter you, you want and also use the pad. I, I know that uh, Jordan is, is uh, used to, to use that expression pad. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like uh, to use both. The, the customizable feature is really important because you can really, you know, have what you need on there. One of the things I did, I'll just throw in quickly from my demo is I was able to go and bring in an audio file to my preset. So when I did my cello demo, as an example, I was able to put a little button that says start backing track and then another little dial that allowed me to control the volume of the backing track and my live performance as well. So that was part of the preset. So I just take my iPad with me where I go and I know I go to that preset and I have that song loaded in as a backing track and I can play, which is a really, really nice thing to be able to have everything. Yeah, that, that's spot. important for, for the live performance because you, you need to be ready and go <laughs> and play. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, and for the flute and or the woodwinds in general, um, we have uh, the flutter tongue, vibrato, as I said, the overblow, uh, and, and the, the breath pressure, that is the, the expression, basically. And uh, let me see if I forgot something. And the growl, we also have the growl. So on the strings, we don't have pizzicato. So uh, these, uh, these strings are just bowed strings. And uh, if you want to make a spiccato, uh, you can emulate a uh, quite good uh, uh, spiccato if you uh, set the, um, uh, the instrument uh, um, using the finger expression and uh, uh, touch the, the key on top of it. So the, the Y axis controls the strength of the attack. So if you want a gentle attack, you, you just start from, from, from the bottom of the key. If you want a, a scratched sound, so a, a marcato or spiccato, you have to, uh, to press the key on the, on the top of the key. So you, you cannot do any articulation as in the, in the, for example, on the desktop version, but you, you are able quite to mimic the most important articulation also on the, on the GeoShred surface. <coughs> awesome. Sorry. I think, uh, Mahesh, I think that we should probably thank everybody for coming and maybe just play a little bit uh, sure. of sounds uh, on the way out. Sure, right. sure. Thank you so much. If, you, if I think uh, uh, in case they need to get in touch with uh, the GeoShare team, what, what address should they get in touch with? Oh, uh, do I know that off the top of my head? May, maybe we Pat, have... Pat can actually comment. Yes, he should put it in the text window for everybody. Because, the support, um, the support yes. Email. Great. Yeah, awesome. That'd be awesome. So thank you, so... Lele. Thank you yeah, so thank much. You, Good to see you. And thank you, Simone, who's behind the scenes somewhere yes. as well. <laughs> and to Pat and to, the, to Julius and to Nick, who spends uh, every night from midnight to uh, six in the morning making a lot of this magic happen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Luca. <laughs> Which is perfect for, uh, for our friends in Italy because I think Nick is communicating with. Yeah, yeah, I I, I communicate with Nick at every every hour in the <laughs> right. So, so, the, so just to know, the Geo Shred production is going on twenty four hours a day. Exactly. It's not. It's not. Some businesses will say that, and you know, it's an exaggeration. But in our case, uh, twenty four Geo Shred office is open twenty four hours a day to make this magic happen. So <laughs> yes, it's really, it's really true. So, uh, yeah, so what do you think? We'll play a little. Uh, maybe we can showcase each of the sounds and. Uh, yeah, we can jam a little bit. Slowly. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Okay, cool. cool. So, um, you can start. You need to tell me a scale. <laughs> and, uh, 
Oh, oh, um, what, what, whatever skill you you start and I'll match it. Okay. I'll, at least uh, I'll try. Saxophone in D. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> we can jam long distance. Of course we can. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That was fun. So uh, the sounds we featured were you played the flute, saxophone, I was the flute, cello. A little bit of cello, oh, yeah. yeah. And the last one oh. was violin, yeah. I think. Yeah. Awesome. Right, right. Great. Well, thank you so much. And thanks to everybody at the Live Demi uh, team for having us. It's uh, wonderful to connect with my friends uh, across the continents and uh, to have the whole team assembled as well. And thanks to everybody out there. And uh, I will say um, that, you know, our team and all of us are very responsive and we look forward to interacting with everybody uh, and answering, continuing to answer questions. And uh, we look, also look forward to seeing everybody playing these beautiful instruments. So thanks to the audio modeling guys. And uh, thank you, Mahesh. All the, Thank all you so the much. Uh, yeah. And great. If you guys have any questions, just email uh, Pat. He'll put in the um, the details uh, on the chat. So thank you so much, Jordan. It was lovely. My friend. <laughs> Good to see you. Beautiful. Awesome. Take care. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.